Okay, is it presentable? Yes, sir. And recording is on, na? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. Okay, so we will discuss uh, in this lecture about the concept of the transfer function, and we will discuss how the pole zero will be presented, and what is the concept of the pole zero pairing, and we will also discuss the some MATLAB functions that will be utilized in order to uh, here the uh, represent the poles and zeros of the system transfer function. First of all, we will discuss the system transfer function of the analog system, and after that, we, uh, after, we will discuss the system transfer function of the digital system. As we have discussed that uh, if we are interested for the analog system, then that analog system is represented with the help of the differential equations. And if we are interested to develop the mathematical model of the digital system, then that is represented with the help of the difference equation. And at the same time, we have also discussed that if we are interested in order to get the uh, here the frequency response or the pole zero plot or uh, to analyze the system uh, system's behavior or the characteristics in the frequency domain, for those purposes, we have to utilize the concept of the uh, transformation. In the case of the analog system, which, uh, those are represented with the help of the differential equation. We will utilize the Laplace transformation and for the purpose of the digital system that are represented with the help of the difference equation, for those purposes, we have to utilize the J transformation. So in this lecture, we are just going to discuss all these concepts which are related with the system transfer function of the analog system and the digital system as well as their poles, zeros, and the pole zero pairing uh, property of the system. In this lecture, first we will discuss here the transfer function of the system in yes domain. Then we will discuss the transfer function in the Z domain. After that, we will discuss here the pole zero gain representation. Then we will discuss some here the plots using the MATLAB function like the frequency that will represent the frequency response. When we say frequency response, that includes the amplitude response as well as the uh, phase response. Frequ S function will be utilized for the purpose of the frequency response of the analog system. And similarly, FreqZ will be utilized as a MATLAB function in order to represent the frequency response of the digital system. For the purpose of the roots, that is the poles and zeros, we will utilize here the function roots in the case of the analog system. And in the case of the digital system, that is the, how the pole zero will be represented. For that purpose, we will utilize the Z plane function. A function TF to PZK, that is transfer function to pole zero and gain. This function will be utilized in order to represent any transfer function that will be represented with the help of the pole zero representation along with a constant gain of that system. Similarly, we will utilize a function TF2 SOS, that is transfer, how the transfer function will be broken into the second order section, TF2 SOS. So first of all, we will discuss here the some concepts of the continuous time LTI system, so transfer function. As we know, what is that transfer function? Then for that purpose, we have to consider a relaxed system and having the single input, single output, and the system is continuous time LTI system, and it will be described by means of a linear constant coefficient differential equation. We assume a causal excitation, that is the input is a causal signal, not the anti-causal signal here, and as we know how the transfer function of that, uh, this system will be described, then we know the transfer function is Laplace ratio of the Laplace transform of the output to the Laplace transform of the input. Here, the all initial conditions are zero because we have considered a relaxed system. Now, mathematically, this will be represented as the HS if the HS is the transfer function, and YS is the Laplace transform of the output. 
xs is the laplace transform of the input then hs is represented as the ys by x of the s now the transfer function here is a ratio of the two polynomial if we see we have the two polynomial one is the again if we are uh, coming to this one that is the ys is a polynomial and the x is is also polynomial so hs that is the transfer function is a ratio of the two polynomials in complex frequency domain that is represented by the s here and if we replace s by j omega then this hs that is the transfer function will be named as the frequency response of the system as we have discussed now it has the two section one is the amplitude and the second one is the phase or the argument the first one that changes with respect to a frequency is known as the amplitude response and the second one that is phase changing with respect to frequency will be named as the phase response here now we will try to discuss the properties uh, associated with the lti system using uh, here the concept of the laplace transform as we have discussed that hs is a ratio of the two polynomials bs by the as and bs is the numerator as is the denominator bs is a function of the s and state um, is equal to 0 to capital l and the coefficients related to this one are the vl multiplied by s to the power l similarly as is also polynomial here and it has a range from 0 to capital m and the coefficients associated with this are the ams and that is the am multiplied by s to power m so it has been represented as m is equal to 0 to m, that is the summation, having the am multiplied by s to the power m. Now, poles and zeros. As we are well aware with this concept, what are the poles? Poles are the roots of the denominator terms of the transfer function. That is that they will be the roots of the as. And how that will uh, roots will be decided in order to decide or derive or to compute the roots, we have to put the as is equal to the denominator and denominator of the transfer function and that will be is equal to zero here. Then we will uh, derive the roots and these roots will be known, named as the poles. Similarly, if we are interested to get the zeros of the transfer function, then here the bs, that is the, uh, here the numerator of the transfer function, that will be considered as equal to zero and then we will derive here the roots and those roots will be named as the zero zeros of that particular LTI system. Now, pole zero representation, how the pole zero uh, representation takes place, for that, we have to consider in a constant here the H0 that is sometimes named as the gain or the scale factor. And then in the numerator, having the all the zeros, and that is the here the uh, here multiplications of the all the zeros, S minus SZK and here the uh, having the k zeros and these are the sz1 sz2 up to szk and similarly in the denominator terms the multiplications of the s minus here the poles uh, corresponding poles and there are the ith poles here there are the total i pole and i here the s minus spi that is the sp1 sp2 like that up to the spi so these are the representations of the pole zero uh, of a transfer function along with the h naught here. And since here the coefficients of the transfer function, uh, coefficients of the system are constant and the real. So here the poles and zeros either should be real or they should be in complex conjugate pair. Now. If we are interested in order to represent the first order sections and the by quads, why we are trying to break the total transfer function in the first order section and the second order section, we ask if any function can be expressed as a product of the first order and the second order transfer functions, so any LTI system can be resolved into first order section and the by quads. Why uh, this type of the breaking takes place in order to avoid the sensitivity of the coefficients here. So systems described by the first order transfer function, we call it the FOS, that is the first order section. 
and a system characterized by the second order transfer function we call a biquadratic section or the biquad. Here, how the FOS will be represented FO, as we have gone through the in the previous classes uh, in uh, during so many discussions that the HS is represented by the B1S plus B0 in the numerator divided by A1S plus A0 in the uh, here the denominator and here denominators coefficient a1 should not be equal to 0 and this is the first order transfer function here similarly for the biquads uh, or the biquadratic section uh, s s will be represented as the b2 in the numerator b2 s square plus b1 s plus b0 and in the denominator a2 s square plus a1 s plus a0 and here the condition is that a2 should not be equal to 0 here. Now, if we are interested in order to represent the pole 0, uh, in order to represent the frequency response of a system, how the frequency response of a system uh, is represented, then we have to consider the HS, that is the transfer function. Suppose we consider here the HS of a biquad section or the biquadratic uh, equation is considered here and say it is represented as or we have derived any transfer function from the given requirements as equal to the 0.2 s square plus 0.3 s plus 1 divided by s square plus 0.4 s plus 1. Now in this one, how to be manually compute or mathematically compute the frequency response of the system in, in order to get the frequency response of a system, s is replaced by the j omega. Now this HS becomes the H of the J omega, that is a, it becomes a function of the complex frequency terms uh, J omega. So it has the two section, one is the amplitude that changing with respect to omega, that is the frequency, and the frequency here, and the second one is the phase that is again changing with respect to frequency here. Now if we represent variation of the amplitude with respect to frequency, that is the amplitude response, and if we represent the variation of the phase with respect to frequency that is known as the phase response of the system. Now, in order to consider a larger range of the frequency, we use the frequency axis, that is the x-axis logarithmic. And here, uh, we can use both the axis as the logarithmic. If we are using only the semi-log, then we have to use the semi-log command. And if we are using the logarithmic uh, axis here, then we have to use the log log command as we have discussed during the time of the discussion of the basic concepts of the MATLAB. Now we are just again coming to this one, how the this transfer function, how the uh, frequency response associated with the transfer function will be represented using the MATLAB command. So for that purpose, we have to describe here the uh, numerator and the denominator. What is the denominator terms here? We, denominator polynomials and how the polynomials are described, we just describe from highest, higher power to the lower power here. The coefficients associated with the highest power to the lowest power here. So the coefficients are the 1 and the next coefficient is the 0 0.4 and 1. So it is a row matrix here. Either we can represent it by the space or by a comma here. So what A is described, then termination, that is the semicolon. Similarly, B is described here, that is associated with the numerator here and then frequency range that has to be considered here we have considered frequency range 0 0.1 to 10 having a gap of the 0 0.01 then we have to use the command which we have discussed in the very starting that is the frequency frequency command will be utilized in order to get the amplitude response uh, and the phase response that is the frequency response of the analog system here s that is the transfer is nothing but this is a quick uh, response quick s b a and w these are the three parameters which we have described here and what is the magnitude magnitude is the absolute value of the hs h and what is the phase that is the angle associated with the h so now we are interested in order to draw the graph for the amplitude as well as for the phase that is the magnitude and the phase at in the same graph then the same graph or the same paper will be divided into the two sections. So how the two sections will be divided here? Two rows and one column. So we have cal calculated here the two rows and one column. And the first one, that is the 211, 
this will be the uh, subplot that is related to the magnitude here so subplot 211 will be the logarithmic scale on the x axis as well as the logarithmic scale on the y axis that is the log log and what is the x comma y plot x comma y just uh, uh, remind it just recall it so plot x comma y so here a w comma m and then grading takes place here what has to be written on the y axis uh, for that purpose we will use the command y label and then write the magnitude and title first title title has to be written the title has to be written that the frequency that is the frequency response frequency s b a we are trying to write this one on the uh, as the title of the graph frequency s b comma a comma w here and then the second plot starts here now if we see the first plot we find the 2 comma 1 comma 1 that is the two rows of one column so the first column is first row is one and this one is related to the magnitude plot and on the x axis we have considered the logarithmic graph on the y axis again we have considered the logarithmic graph the title of the graph is h equal to frequency frequ s b comma a comma w here whatever we have mentioned here now coming to the second plot here for that one we have to use the sub plot 2 comma 1 comma 2 that is the second one here the second row starts and the, in the second row we have to use the semi logarithmic paper or the semi logarithmic graph and which uh, axis will be considered as the logarithmic x so we have to consider uh, here the consider semi log x then w comma p that is the uh, here the frequency comma phase then grading takes place and the y level we will write here the phase that is radian and the x level we will write the omega here so on the x axis we have written here the omega on the y axis we have written the phase so so far we are we have discussed how we represent the transfer function of the analog ldi system and how, how we uh, used to display the amplitude response as well as the phase response and sometimes we call it the bode plot here uh, that is utilized in order to know the gain cross over phase cross over frequencies gain margin phase margin as well as the stability of the system also here uh, now if we are interested about the roots then naturally we have to describe the polynomials and what are the polynomials the denominator and numerator here the here the first we have described the denominator the first polynomial numerator second polynomial roots of the b that is the second here the roots of the b and the roots of the a and roots of the b that is the numerator that will be represented with the help of the zeros and roots of the a that is the poles here so plot here the real portion are of the z real of the value of the z imaginary of the z and represent is the roots red in color and what is the marker zero here we are using the zero that is the for the zeros here and real p imaginary p and we are using here the blue that is the uh, blue in color and x as the uh, here the uh, marker now axis that is the axis range of the x axis minimum to maximum here y axis minimum to maximum here what we di uh, discuss we just have to make a practice and we have to Uh, uh, recall it in each and every lecture only then we will be able to connect the the pre uh, previous level and we will be able to understand the discussion of each and every lecture and hence we can perform whatever we learn in the uh, our laboratory here so here x level on the x level we have to write the real part and the y level we have to write the imaginary part and the legend one is the zero and the second one is the pole and same has been done here so by the command of the roots here just see we are using only the roots command in order to get here the pole zero plot and in the previous slide we are using only the frequ s in order to get the amplitude and the phase response of the plot here now some more concepts which are associated with the analog systems we are just trying to touch each and every concepts of the analog ltic is that because these concepts will be very helpful uh, during the time of the discussion of the discrete time of the digital 
LDI system here. Now the quality factor. First, the HS, that is the transfer function, will be broken into the gain and pole zero representation here. And as we know, these uh, poles as well as the zeros must be the complex conjugate. Suppose any root here, the SZ means that is related to the root of the uh, zeros and SZ1 that is the first uh, zero here. Similarly, the Z2 second and if we write here SP1 that is the first pole and the SP2 second pole here. <coughs> now, if we are interested in order to uh, hear the uh, represent this one in terms of the Q, then any SI that is the any root will be re uh, represented in the form of the real and imaginary. So its complex conjugate will be the next root here. That is the uh, uh, here the complex conjugate of this one. And now if we multiply the, the two roots here, the roots and its com here the uh, its related complex conjugate, then that will be represented as the S square plus omega i. That is the omega i is related to the ith uh, here the uh, roots here and it, uh, its complex conjugate and divided by the qi multiplied by s plus omega i square any uh, here the multiplication of the complex conjugate will be rep uh, represented by this one which we have uh, discussed in the previous classes and the qi that is the quality fact of that uh, this uh, one will be described by the minus of the mod of the si divided by twice of the real portion of the si and omega i will be the mod of the si here now the complex pole zero pair this for the is section of the hs this may be represented some uh, how here the is section of the hs means hs is represented as a uh, cascade in a cascade manner that is the hs is nothing but it is multiplied by the s1 s s2 s up to the h n s here and i starts from uh, 1 to n and the product of the h i s and here the um, we have considered i uh, from 1 to n and phi b break this one into the second order uh, here the pole zero pair in order to reduce the sensitivity of a transfer function with respect to deviation of the coefficient values here it is preferable to represent the transfer function by a product of the first order section and the second order section here now if HIS is represented by this one, then in the numerator it becomes the S square plus omega ZI upon 2 ZI multiplied by S plus omega ZI S square. And in denominator it will be represented as the S square plus omega PI upon QPI multiplied by S plus omega PI square. Now, if we are interested in order to represent the transfer function of any low pass filter, just recall it. Then how the low pass filter will be represented? The transfer function will be represented. The second order low pass filter, that is the omega p square divided by s square plus omega p upon qp multiplied by s plus omega p square. And the graph, the farther q when it is 1 by root 2 or 0 0.707, that we will get here the flat response. And as we are increasing the q from this value, we will get here the peak. And now if we see the peaks are decreasing here, the range of the peak are this range of the band is decreasing here. And for the higher uh, value of the Q, we are getting here the higher peak. Means here the, uh, this amplitude is increasing here as well as the selectivity is also, we are, for the purpose of the selection or the, for the purpose of the selectivity, we are getting better and better result here. Gain bandwidth product gain is increasing and bandwidth is decreasing and here the gain is also related to the sensitivity we can see here the sensitivity is increasing now coming to the high pass filter or high pass transfer function now the similar in the similar manner that is the denominator will remain same but the numerator will be changed here in place of the omega p square now it will become the s square here s square divided by s square plus omega p by qp multiplied by s plus omega p square and the graph and again for the qp that is the here the quality factor 
if it is equal to 1 by root 2 that is 0 0.707 for that purpose you will get here the flat response and as we are increasing the value of the key we will get here the peaks again the same concept gain bad product coming to the function of the trans bandwidth uh, and the response amplitude response of the band pass transfer function here band pass transfer function will be represented the transfer function will be represented as the omega p by q p multiplied by s divided by s square plus omega p upon q p multiplied by s plus omega p square here now see here what is happening again for the q p is equal to 0 0.7 the bandwidth is up to a here the uh, higher uh, range as we are increasing the q the bandwidth decreases here now for the band reject filter the transfer function will become here the s square plus omega p square divided by s square plus omega p upon q p s plus omega p square and as we are increasing the here the q from 1 by root 2 what is happening again the bandwidth of the rejection portion is decreasing now the all pass transfer function is represented as s square minus omega p upon q p multiplied by s plus omega p square divided by s square plus omega p upon q p multiplied by s plus omega p square and here if we see then we will find the total amplitude of this transfer function that is the mod of the h p h a p when s is replaced by the j omega it becomes one that is the magnitude is equal to one so here we have just represented the argument of the h j omega means how we are how the argument is changing when we change the value of the omega for the different q now amplitude equalizer if we see here the all pass filter the equalizer when we replace this one by the numerator it becomes the amplitude equalizer here and we have represented here the amplitude equalizer having the different values of the ratio of the quality factor of the system to the quality factor of the uh, here the z and uh, we have represented it in this manner here the for the different value of the q p by q z so and there is one more concept that is named as the pole zero pairing in the analog system for the purpose of the pole zero pairing what happens first decomposition of the numerator and the denominator into the products of the constant terms and the first order and the second order terms is represented then constructing the first order and the second order rational functions by pairing the numerator and the denominator terms and in the third step what we do in the third step pairing the poles with higher q factors with zeros that are as close as possible to the poles this concept is known as the pole zero pairing which we have learned during the time of the network signal system control system analog electronics etc here and what is what are the different criteria for the perp in order to achieve the maximal dynamic range or the maximum signal to noise noise ratio or for the minimal sensitivity and maximal dynamic range is the ratio of the maximum magnitude response over the whole range of the frequency to the minimum magnitude response in the pass band. This is named as the maximum, the maximal dynamic range. So we have discussed so far that the concept of the analog system means how the analog LTI system will be represented in continuous domain, that is with the help of the differential equation, then we will apply the Laplace transform in order to achieve the frequency response that the amplitude response and the phase response as well as well as we have also discussed the different types of the transfer functions of the low pass filter high pass filter band pass filter band reject all pass and the equalizers which uh, for which we have gone through uh, previous in uh, previous classes and we have 
also discussed what is the concept of the pole zero pairing which are used which is used in the analog uh, system or the continuous uh, time lti system for the maximum uh, dynamic uh, range as well as uh, maximum signal to noise ratio and uh, uh, for the uh, uh, purpose of the other advantages like the to minimize the sensitivity uh, for the different types of the variation here now we are just moving towards the another domain that is the digital domain and naturally this will be named as the discrete time ldi system and we have gone to this system and we have discussed during three or four lectures that the, how the discrete time ldi system will be represented using the difference equation here and for the purpose of the analysis discrete time lti system we utilize the z transformation first what is the transfer function the same in the similar manner in the similar fashion as we have described the transfer function of the analog system thus we have to describe here also that is we will consider a relaxed single input single output discrete time lti a uh, system that is uh, described by means of the linear constant coefficients difference equation and here again we have to utilize the input that is the uh, a causal uh, here that is uh, we assume here the causal excitation uh, so that that is a feasible here and the, how the transfer function will be described in order to describe the transfer function we have to consider the ratio of the laplace tra jet transform as we have considered the laplace transform in the case of the analog here we have to consider the ratio of the uh, jet transform of the output to the jet transform of the input that is the yz upon the xz will, this will be defined as the xz where xz is the transfer function so here we have written this one that is the xz is yz upon the xz and we have gone through the jet uh, transformation in this class we have um, discussed the ratio that the concept related with the transform. so xz is a rational function that will be represented in the jet transfer function is a ratio of two polynomials as we have discussed in the case of the analog the transfer function is a ratio of the two polynomials and that is in complex variable that is the s but here it will be the con here we also a ratio of the two polynomials and it will be in complex variable of z and if z is replaced by e to power j omega then s z will be represented using the complex e z uh, e z uh, e, e power z omega functions here that is a, it has the real and the imaginary portions and both will vary or change their values with respect to omega or the frequency and this is known as the frequency response of the discrete lti system many properties of the lti system will be discussed using this concept here that is the xz is a ratio of the bz to az and az and bz are the polynomials in the z here as we have discussed the poles and zeros in the analog system similarly in order to get the poles we have to consider the denominator polynomial that is the az and that will be equal to zero and when we solve it in order to get the roots then those roots will be named as the poles and when the polynomial bz is put equal to 0 uh, that is the numerator and we solve for the roots and then those derived roots will be named as the zeros here the pole zero representation how the pole zero representation takes place again in the similar fashion which we have discussed in the previous section for the purpose of the nl or the continuous time system where the hz will be equal to the h naught and having the two ratios that is the here the ratios of the two polynomials in the numerator it is represented by the multiplication of the z minus z 
ZK, ZK ZK that is the zeros and K means KF zeros here. Similarly, in the denominator, Z minus ZPI, P that is the poles, I, IF pole here. So here, the, if we write here the Z, Z1, that is that it is related to the zero first, zero second, and so on. Similarly, P1, P2, poles first, second, and so on. SG is the scale factor. Now, first section and second section are the bipods, as we have discussed in the analog case. In the similar manner, similar fashion, we will describe here the first order sections and the bipods. How the first order section will be described? The HZ of the first order section will be B1Z plus B0 divided by A1Z plus A0. But the condition is that A1 should not be equal to 0. This is known as the FOS, the first order section of the transfer function. In order to represent in a general manner, the bi-quad section or the second order section SOS, HZ will be equal to the B2Z square plus B1Z plus B0 divided by A2Z square plus A1Z plus A0. Again, the condition is that A2 should not be equal to 0 here. System described by the first order section naturally will be known as the FOS. First order section and described by the second order section will be named as the biquad or the biquadratic section. Any transfer function can be expressed as a product of the first order section, the second transfer functions. So any LTI system can be resolved into first order sections and the biquads. Hello? Hello? Whether I'm uh, audible? Yes, sir. You are audible now. Uh, PPT no, is also present. Yes, sir. Hi, yes, sir. PPT is also. Okay. So here, SZ can be expressed in terms of the Z inverse, and that is preferred in the DSP. Here, the SZ will be represented as the numerator polynomial of the Z divided by denominator polynomial of the Z. Numerator polynomials may be represented in terms of the Z to power minus 1. That is the here we have considered the Z to power minus L. L starts from 0 to capital L. And coefficients are the BL as we have discussed in the case of the continuous uh, system. Similarly, the denominator terms will be represented am multiplied by z to power minus m and m is 0 to capital m and this representation is preferred in the dsp community a quotient of the two polynomials is called a rational function and the highest power in the polynomials is called the order of the rational function this is a rational function here so what will be the order whichever is larger whether associated with the n z are associated with the DJ. The series that is larger that will be named as the order of that transfer function or that system here. As we have discussed in the case of the analog or the continuous time system, LTI system, that for the purpose of the frequency response, we have to use which type of the function or which type of the command? Anybody? Yeah, please respond it. Which type of the function was used? in order to get the frequency response in continuous time LTI system. Yes, sir. Nancy has responded on the chat box. Frequency, yes. Frequency. Yeah, please frequency. say them that they should uh, uh, speak it so that other people can also uh, listen it. So please try to... Frequency, yes. Yeah, very good. Very good. Good. That's good. Uh, and... Here, if we see, then a very similar command as we have replaced the S by the Z. So what must be the command here? Frequency. 
okay and as we have similarly we have to describe here the b and a numerator and the denominator and here if we have derived uh, describe the numerator and denominator and then if we write here the frequency z then we will get here the frequency response in the z plane as we have to use the frequency s command in order to get the frequency response in the s plane similarly we have to use the frequency z command in the z plane to achieve here the frequency response of the lti discrete time system in the previous section for the pole zero plots we used to use roots and in the z plane we have to use the z plane that is first describe here the numerator and the denominator matrices matrices means the, their coefficients polynomials so here we have described the b and a and then we have to utilize the command z plane and after that write the listed zeros and poles here since there is no specifier so and we can we have we have just use here the zeros and the poles so we have there is the blue in color here so similarly we can use here the line specifiers for the color and other purposes here now if we are interested to get here the pole zero what are the poles what are the values of the poles what are the zero values of the zeros and what is the value of the gain so for that purpose we have to use the zpk means z is the zero is the poles and k is the gain and these are not the parts but they are the notations only here this is only the command but which command we are using here tf2 zpk transfer function to zero poles and gain and from where from the given values of the b and a that is first describe the b describe the a numerator and denominator coefficients and then use that tf2 zpk in parenthesis b comma a to get the values of the zeros poles and the gains okay and here you will get you will achieve the values of the zeros poles and gains that are associated with that particular type of the transfer function so basically what we are doing here the requirement is given and from those requirements we have derived the mathematical equation that is known as the difference equation so from the difference equation we have this describe here the transfer function by applying the z transformation and now after applying the transformation we are using the different types of the commands like in the previous slides we have used here the frequency in order to get the frequency response of the system then we have derived here the pole zero plots uh, from using the z plane command then we have used the transfer function to z pk that is how the what are the values of the zeros poles and gains so from the given requirements we have to derive the equation from the equation we have transferred it into the transfer function and now we are analyzing the transfer function for which purpose in order to know the behavior of the system for which we have developed the mathematical model means what is the frequency response either that one is in a permissible range or it is outside of the permissible range we are trying to achieve here the values of the poles and zeros in order to check the stability and other characteristics associated with that derived transfer function now we will come to the next section that is if there is a larger uh, order of the transfer function then that order of the transfer function will be broken into the first order section and the second order section and how the second order section will be derived so second order section will be derived from the given transfer function first describe the numerator and the denominator very simple command nothing has to do uh, we have to just write 
these very simple or we can say simplest command and then we will get here each and every value for the purpose of our analysis here describe here the p and a and then write sos what is the sos second order section that will be derived from the transfer function and transfer function to second order section that is the derived from the b and a and here we will get this is the return after these are the commands here which will you write in the command window and then you will get this result here sos uh, is this one here now if we see then we will find what is this one sos is nothing but here the if we see second order section second order section the second order is represented something like in this manner that is the if this is the transfer function bz upon az that is have the order of the uh, ms order in the numerator ms order in the denominator that can be represented in the form of the cascading manner in this one hkz h1z multiplied by h2z like that up to the l here and each section is a second order section suppose each section is second order section so here it is written as the biquart section the biquadratic equation numerator and denominator that is the b0k plus b1k z to power minus 1 plus b2k z to power minus 2 divided by 1 plus a1k z to power minus 1 plus a2k z to power minus 2 and k is 1 to l and g is the gain here now this b not k b1 k b2 k these are the coefficients related to the numerator and first the first one that is the first represented b01 b11 b21 okay. along with the numerator and then it starts the denominator 1 plus a1 k a2 k 1 a11 A to one. Similarly, all the values will be represented here in the second order section. So this matrix is just like this matrix here, and we can get what is the value of the B zero K. K means related to the K S section. I am repeating it again. It related to the K S section. So here, if we write here the S O S command, very simple command, then we will derive here the each and every value of the coefficients. Of the second order section here, as we have discussed in the previous case, quality factor. Similarly, we can discuss here the quality factor associated with the transfer function, and we can also discuss here, and uh, we can represent uh, this. That is the how the transfer function uh, for the different uh, type of the system will be uh, represented here. We are just trying to represent the transfer function, and it is the tutorial problem for you. that you have to derive these transfer function related to the low pass filter high pass filter band pass filter band reject filter and all pass filter here and it is a tutorial problem and please try to do whatever the instructions are given in the class so here the sz as we know this will be represented as the gain then in the numerator Multi here the z minus multiplied by the first zero z minus second zero like that here, and denominator having the section of the poles here the z minus z p one z minus z p two like that here, and as we know the coefficients are real, so the poles and zeros must be either real or they must be the complex conjugate. Say the z i is real portion of the z i plus j uh, that is the imaginary portion of the z i, so the is Complex conjugate will become here the in place of the plus here this will become minus, and when the complex pairs are multiplied, then the product of the complex pair will be represented as the z square plus b i z plus a i here, and b i is nothing but it is the minus of the two times real portion of the z i, and a i will be the mod of the z i square, and here the quality factor will be written as the Under in under root one plus a i square minus b i square divided by two times one minus a i. This is also the one tutorial problem for you that you have to derive that q i of a discrete time L T I system for the i s section will be represented by this equation. 
coming to the low pass transfer function here the low pass transfer function you have to derive that the low pass transfer function of the discrete time lti system will be represented either by this equation that is the 1 plus a plus b divided by 4 multiplied by z plus 1 its whole square divided by z square plus bz plus a r this may be represented as 1 plus a plus b divided by 4 then multiplied by 1 plus z inverse its square divided by 1 plus b z inverse plus a z to power minus 2 but the quality factor will be described by in under root 1 plus a its square minus b square divided by twice 1 minus a and again if we draw a graph then we will find that we, there is a flat response when the q is 1 by root 2 r.707 as we are increasing the q here the gain increases but the bandwidth decreases here selectivity is high but the bandwidth is low gain bandwidth product similarly you have to derive that for the high pass filter the transfer function will be given by 1 plus a minus b divided by 4 multiplied by z minus 1 its whole square divided by z square plus bz plus a r it is equal to 1 plus a minus b divided by 4 z power minus 1 minus 1 its whole square and in the denominator 1 plus bz minus 1 plus a z to power minus 2 qp will be described by this equation that is in under root 1 plus a its square minus b square divided by 2 1 minus a and again if the q is 1 by root 2 flight response otherwise peaks or the ripples will take place as we are increasing the value of the q and bandwidth decreases sensitivity increases for the band pass transfer function you have to derive that it is represented as 1 minus a by 2 z to power z square minus 1 divided by z square plus b z plus a r this may also be represented as 1 minus a divided by 2 1 minus z to power minus 2 divided by 1 plus b z inverse plus a z to power minus 2 and quality factor will be represented that in under root numerator is in under root 1 plus a square minus b square divided by in the denominator 2 times 1 minus a and if the q is 0 0.7 then the bandwidth will be larger and the q is increasing bandwidth decreases here for the band pass filter again you have to derive this transfer function that for the band reject filter it is 1 by 2 1 plus a z square plus 2 b z plus 1 plus a divided by z square plus b z plus a r 1 by 2 1 plus a plus 2 b z to power minus 1 plus 1 plus a z to power minus 2 divided by 1 plus b z to power minus 1 plus a z to power minus 2 q p that is the here the quality factor for this filter will be in under root 1 plus a square minus b square and divided by 1, 2 1 minus a and this is the graph which has been shown as we are increasing the q bandwidth of the rejection is decreasing here. all pass filter will be described by this transfer function that is a z square plus b z plus 1 upon z square plus b z plus a or a plus 1 a plus b z power minus 1 plus z power minus 2 divided by 1 plus b z power minus 1 plus a z power minus 2 and its magnitude gain will be equal to 1 quality factor will be described by that so is this formula that is the under root 1 plus a its whole square minus b square divided by 2 1 minus a so what you have to do you have to derive the quality factor in general for the ith section then you have to derive the transfer function of the low pass filter high pass filter band pass filter band reject filter and the all pass filter and 
you have to represent the quality factor associated with those transfer function so this is the assignment for you which have to be submitted by the last lecture of this one that is on thursday now pole zero pairing that in the similar fashion the decomposition of the numerator and the denominator into products of the constant terms the first order and the second order polynomials and then constructing the first order and the second order rational functions by pairing the numerator and the denominator terms and frequently what is used as we have discussed in the s plane that pairing the poles with the higher a with zeros that are as close as possible to those poles for which purpose for the same purpose which we have discussed that is the maximum dynamic range maximum signal to noise ratio and to reduce the sensitivity towards the deviation or the variation of the coefficients so this is about the two days uh, session and in the next lecture we will also discuss some concepts related to this one so if you have any query then please uh, go through those query so that we can discuss it and you are again suggested and requested that please make the practices on the given topics and uh, whatever are the assignments are given to you please try to complete those 